Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be going an overview into an overview on the cascade editor inside of Unreal Engine. Now, this cascade editor is used to create particle systems inside of the engine. These particle systems are going to be your um, VFX, you know, your smoke, your fire, your flames, and all of that cool stuff. So I'm going to start off by quickly showing you a few examples of some particle systems. So you can see here I've got some fire and that's going to be built up of some little embers, some fire materials and stuff. Um, you know, we've also got like this little slipstream coming from a spaceship that I've got. Uh, I'm also going to have some stuff like smoke. Uh, there's loads of cool stuff that I can do with this and hopefully with this overview you should be a little bit more comfortable inside of the cascade editor. You should be able to create your own particle systems and play around with some of the different settings. Um, but like I said, this is just going to be an overview. I am going to be making a couple more videos on showing you exactly how you can create these more advanced particle systems like the ones you're seeing on my screen now. For right now, I just want to get you comfortable with the editor, introduce you to like the viewport, the curve editor, um, different types of emitters and their modules and stuff like that. But anyway, so let's get into this. But before I do, I just want to go over a little bit of basic terminology before I go into the uh, cascade stuff. So when it comes to visual effects inside of Unreal Engine, you have three important things that I want you to know. You have your emitter actors, your particle systems, and then your emitters, and they are all completely different. Sometimes people think they're the same thing, they are not. So I'm gonna quickly try and explain what these are before I go into the video. So first things first, you have an emitter actor. These are essentially just a little actor in the scene that's gonna spawn your particle system. So you can see in my scene here, I've got one. You can't see the particle system coming out of it, but you can see in the world outliner, you can see I've got my emitter actor, I can choose the template for what particle system is going to go on there and all this emitter actor is going to do is just going to spawn it. So the next thing you have is your particle system. Your particle system is essentially going to be a group of different emitters. So if I was to open up this slipstream, uh, you can see that I've got the particle system in the viewport here and this is going to be exactly what the player can see. But this is actually built up of three different emitters. So I've got my particle emitter, my light, and then the fire. And I'm going to show you that that's just the same with this as well. So if I zoom out, you can see I've got three emitters, emitter, uh, particle emitter, light, and fire. If I was to turn off fire and the lights, you can see I've just got my emitters here now, just the little particle emitters. And all of these little emitters are going to have different modules, which we're going to explain later. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for the terminology. I just wanted to get that off my chest and show you guys that, just so you can follow along a little bit easier. So the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to give you an overview to the Cascade Editor. We're going to go through the different panels, what they mean and what you can do with it. So let's start off by taking a quick look at the little toolbar up here. So we've got like um, save, finding content browser. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out what that does. Restart simulation, restart the level, uh, undo, redo, you know, you can do that pretty easily. Um, thumbnail, you can generate the thumbnail, so basically the thing that you see in the content browser down here, adds pretty simple. We can also play around with the bounds, um, so it doesn't go out of the bounds, doesn't go out of the area that you need. Origin axis, um, we can just basically display the origin axis so we can see where it's going to come from. Background color, if we wanted to change that, we can. Uh, we might want to do this just to, um, you know, make your particle system a little bit more viewable. So, for example, if we had a red background, you're not going to see your particle system very well. So you might want to change it to a more contrasting color, something like a black, or, you know, you can change it to a yellow. Do whatever you want to do. It's entirely up to you. But for now, I'm just going to leave this on, uh, on the black for now. So we can see our particles really really easily. So we've also got some LOD stuff, I'm not going to go over that for now, um, it's just basically setting up stuff for level of detail so the further away you are, um, you know, the lower the detail is, just to help with performance a little bit. So we're not going to go over those but let's get into the important bit. So we've got our part, uh, viewport here and this is showing our whole particle system or whatever you've got selected for now. 
because I've actually turned off my fire and lights, it's just going to show my particle systems because that uh, it's just going to show my particle emitter and make that as the particle system. But had I had everything you know selected, it's just going to show us whatever. So the viewport is essentially going to show us exactly what we're creating and it's going to show you what the player is going to see. We've got a few settings that we can play around with inside of the viewport if you want to. So if we go to view, we could you know have a few overlays so show the memory it's using, the time, some event counts. We've got different uh, view modes so we can change that to like wireframe, unlit. So I'm going to show you unlit so there's no lights in there. It doesn't look too great. Um, usually the player is going to see it with lighting anyway so I'm just going to leave that to lit. You can also use the shader complexity just to see how complex the shader is. You want to try and keep that relatively low anyway. So the green color is going to be, you know, not very complex, very simple. Um, like the background is going to be nothing in there. And pretty much the redder it gets, um, you know, the more complex it's going to be. We're not going to explain that too much for now, but uh, let's just go ahead and leave that to normal. So I'm going to leave that to lit. And if you wanted to, you can also change the detail mode, low, medium, high, etc. We've also got a few other things here like um, orbit mode, vector fields, grid. I'm going to explain those as we go along with the cascade videos as it's going to take a little bit too long to explain right now. So I'm just going to leave those here. We've also got time. So if we wanted to, we could play, uh, play and pause this. So if I just pause it right now, you can see it stopped. Um, you know, we can press play to keep it going. Loop it. We can change the speed that it plays at. So I can put it into sloop, super slow motion. It's going to look really cool. Um, but for now I'm just going to leave it 100% so we can see exactly what the player is going to be seeing. So that's the viewport, pretty simple, shows you exactly what you're creating. The next bit is going to be your emitters. So like I said, particle systems are built up of different emitters. So in this case for the fire particle system, I've got the particle emitter, the light and the fire. And these all have their own little modules. And these little modules are also going to have a details panel for each of them. So if I was to just click the black area here, you can see I've got my details panel for pretty much everything, uh, the whole particle system. So I can change things like FPS, uh, thumbnail and all that stuff. It's not too important for now, but if I was to click a specific emitter, I can change some settings specific to that. So things like the name, the allocation account, uh, allocation um, uh, amount or the detail mode or if I was to click one of the specific little um, modules for me like uh, so that could be things like spawn I could go into that and change things like the spawn rate so instead of it being one I could set it to two I could set it to five and you can see more and more of them are spawning and stuff like that so that's how we adjust our emitters we just play around with the details um, like the rate scale and stuff we can also add in things like initial velocity, color over life, and stuff like that. But what I really want you to get into your head is that you have these three uh, different emitters. You can create these or um, you know however you want. If you want to create one, it's very simple. Um, just right click one, go to emitter, and then you can just uh, export one, duplicate it, or you could even create a new one, um, which I will be showing you in another, uh, another episode. Um, but if you just want a quick look, um, just add a new emitter after, before, and then, you know, it's it's as simple as that. And we can also add the little modules from down here. Um, it's as simple as that. I'm not going to be going over creating the vol uh, modules for now. I'm just going to show you how to modify them, as I have been doing. Um, you know, and that's just going to be changing, like, the different settings for each one. So I've showed you how to change things like, um, you know, the spawn rate. The size, we can also change that. Um, if you have a size module, that is, you just play around with the minimum and the maximum. Um, it's very, very, you know, straightforward, really. Um, just add the different modules, play around with the settings. We also have something called the curve editor, and this is probably one of the most powerful tools inside of the cascade editor, and we can use this to control things. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could control the color over life using the curve editor. And what this curve editor is going to do is it's essentially going to allow us to, um, you know, manipulate our settings over time. So you can see I've got my little track here and it lasts for about one second. 
and all I've got in here at the moment is just edge blur control and I can control that. If I wanted to, I could add one of these modules into here and then I can adjust the settings for that. So let's go ahead and show you how you can do that. So to add one, you just press the little curve editor button next to the module that you want. Just go ahead and press it. And now you can see I've got my color over life and my alpha over life. And you can also see these are now on my curve editor here and I can play around with these and I've got my settings for red, green and blue and I can use these to change the color basically. So if you want to make these fit to your curve editor, you can just go ahead and press uh, horizontal vertical fitting. We can also pan and zoom around this, it's pretty simple really. Um, for now I'm just going to use the fit settings. Um, we've also got all of these, I'm not going to go over these in too much detail as we don't need to worry about these right now. We've also got tabs, so we can create a tab and then when we're using a current tab, so let me show you these. So if I go ahead and remove these from the curve, if I create a tab, I'm going to call this uh, color tab. So you might want to do this for the sake of organization. So if we go into our color tab and we add something to this, it's only going to add it to the color tab and not the default tab. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the alpha because we don't really need to play around with this. But let's go ahead and show you how you can change the color over life using the curve editor. Now if you want to follow along with this kind of stuff, um, I advise you open up one of the sample um, particle systems, there's loads of stuff that comes in the um, sample content. Find the color over life or anything else like that that you want to adjust using the curve editor and just go for it. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add a new point on here. So I could turn on certain colors, turn them off, and then I can adjust them. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, sorry about the little cut there. Anyway, so let's get back into the curve editor. So you can see I've got my curves here for my color over life on my fire. Let's go ahead and show you exactly how you can change these. So we've got the little different points on the different times in our particle system. So our particle system right now, it just goes to about one second and we've got a few different points along the way. And the way that color over life is going to work is it's going to change the color over the lifetime of the emitter. And that lifetime is just going to be one second for now. So you can see at the moment, the value for red is actually quite high at the beginning and goes down um, to almost zero at the end here. So if I wanted to, at spawn, I could go ahead and change the red value to something a little bit lower to change the color. So I could go and drag this down and you can see when it goes below these other values, you can see that it sort of changes colors. So if I move the green up to something high, it's gonna change to green. If I change this up, you know, it just adjusts the color a little bit more. You've gotta know your color theory for this kind of stuff to get the right colors that you're after. But for the most part, you should just be able to play around with it and see what you wanna do. Now, if you wanna create your own custom little points in time on this little curve editor, um, all you gotta do is just click one of the little lines here control click and then it should give you points for all three colors and then you can just adjust these accordingly. So if I was to move the green down at this point, you can see it adds a little bit of purple after a little bit of time. Um, you can't see it, you know, you can't see it properly working out, um, but you do should know that it's over time that it's doing this. Um, and because it's just looping, you can see that it just adds in the purple there and it looks like it's there all of the time. Um, but that's pretty much how the curve editor works. It's incredibly simple. All you gotta do is just adjust these points to get, you know, the sort of colors and the effects and all that cool stuff that you are after. Um, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over for the cascade editor for now. Hopefully you have a pretty simple and solid overview of the Cascade Editor, how it works, and over the next few videos, we're going to be showing you exactly how you can create some of these more complex modules, what the different settings mean, and get you creating these effects like fire, smoke, and so on. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.